sister kind of thought maybe she, you know, might be a little slow just in how she was interacting, whatever. Yeah. And then one day my sister sat and watched it with her, and um, she realized that she was doing sign language for certain days that she needed. Aww. And she was like, because <laughs> she's maybe a year old. Aww. You know, this is awesome. She's definitely a precious gift from God, that she sure is. That might be a dollar year with them so much. Yes. Yes. And I just to see her looking so healthy and doing so good, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. I love it. Rachel, Rachel always says she's going to be able to get better. You're right, I don't do the plans. That's right. <laughs> Cross around to the front, girl.
traditionally, now it depends on if you look at it from a from what standpoint of view you're looking at it from. If you're looking at it from a worldly standpoint of view, or from what the traditional or what main denominationalism would say is today's Palm Sunday. But if, and, but if that's going about what's called the Gregorian calendar. Anybody know what the Gregorian calendar is? That's your calendar you hang on your wall? Okay. So today we're going to learn and discover some things about Palm Sunday, why it is, what it is, all this kind of stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw that here to you. I'm going to put a bunch of scripture in front of you and let you decide and let, let God talk to you. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't die for you. I didn't go to the cross for you. Amen. So, you know, let God is, he's our God. And so he and him alone is able and capable enough to talk to us and tell us all about what he wants us to know. All right? Amen. Brother, would you be so kind as to pray again, please? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for giving us the liberty to come in your name to gather together and worship you, Lord Jesus. I ask that you take hold of this service, Lord. We're going to give together to give you glory. Only your name, Jesus. Thank you for moving your Holy Spirit severally as you will, Lord. Thank you for igniting us and keep us burning by your heaven fire, Lord Jesus. And anoint every tongue that speaks here, that it will speak your Holy Spirit spoken message with your glory and life giving living water, Lord Jesus. And we just praise you. We're here to hear you, Lord. Have your way with us, Jesus. Amen. 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 This is it. Right. This focus where I see all this too. Okay, good. All right. So let me let me kind of give you some some reality check about what Palm Sunday is. Because there are things that we think about, things that we talk about, things that we discuss, why we go, when we go, how we go. I, I, today, I guarantee you, it's going to be the most abnormal Palm Sunday service you have ever been a part of, I promise y'all. Okay? And the reason why I'm telling you that is because I don't do things routinely. I won't do it by our routine. You're supposed to. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to be big old kind of palm branches, you know, big leaves like, you know, and supposed to bring them in and wave and stuff. I don't know what they did at the church this morning. They had some up there. They had some up there. Usually you're supposed to have them wave and all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, traditionally we work, we do, we're told to do, how to do, when to do, yeah. what to do. But I want to kind of go into some, some, some bigger things to help you understand. I want you to understand the why and the why. I want you to understand the when, the how, and the who. I want you to understand something deeper about what it is to say on Sunday. So when you walk away from here today, and the reason why, so I'll go ahead and share it now, get it out of the way so I don't have to worry about it. The reason why I wear Grammy is because my grandmother poured it into me to wear Grammy on Palm Sunday. But God used it to teach me because each one of my grandmothers was a different denomination. Every one of them were different. Nobody was the same. Amen. So I, I got this, this barrage of, of information thrown at me as a kid. But what I did realize what God was going to do was teach me all kinds of things from my youth. For example... My grandfather used to have a saying all the time, blood means everything and everything else is a stranger. When I got saved, God took that same lesson that my grandfather taught me that blood means everything. That's right. And everything else is, is a stranger. stranger. That's right. Okay? So these are things that God would use in my childhood to teach me things. And so today I'm going to take us back to my childhood. And I'm going to show you some things that I've learned but I'm going to show you some truth of what really is true. Because this is good for you. Don't ask for anything. This is good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Pepper, zero. cream soda, zero sugar. Is it good for you? No. <laughs> Miranda's over here. Good bit to answer that question for me. Uh, is this good for me, Wanda? No. No. Is it, what, why is it, Doctor? What, what's in it that's bad for me? Everything. Huh? Everything. Everything. 
Well, you know, the point is, is that looks can be deceiving, can't they? Oh, yeah. My taste buds can also be deceiving. Do you ever know in the scripture where it says taste and see? How is it? Why do you taste? How do you taste and see? Your eyeballs connected to your tongue? Mm-hmm. In a physical way, yes, that's true. But that's not the reason why he says taste and see. Mm-hmm. Because the reality is that no one wants to taste the, the, the glimpse of him. You may see something in depth that you didn't see before. So I may not see behind this aluminum pan what's in there exactly. But is it good for me? Do I drink a lot? Yes. Am I going to admit it? Yes, I am. But I'm going to, I won't sit here just so somebody won't be getting them. I'm going to sit right there just so I'm just... <laughs> So there are things that we, we have been exposed to over the course of years. Things that we have been taught and trained over the course of time. And maybe some things ain't really what they really appear to be. Yeah. Because if you were to ask Bill Baxter about him and his his anger side, what would he turn into? The Hulk. The Hulk, exactly right. That's what his name was before, and he becomes the Hulk. You don't know about Mr. Hyde, the only person you really need is Dr. Dr. Jekyll. So you so you gotta know there's some things behind the, the thing that you may not know is true. Okay, for example, why do we go to church? 11 o'clock on Sunday. Well, I chose that because it's convenient for everybody. You don't have to get up so early. You know, mm-hmm. you know, sort of can. You know, thank you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, I mean, there are reasons why I do it, which is really 12 o'clock because I go by Easter time. So, mm-hmm. this, this is new time for me. Right? So, there are things that we do, but why do we go to 11 o'clock Sunday? Why is it Sunday? Sunday is supposed to be the last day that Jesus was resurrected. Or it was supposed to be yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Right. Sure. Well, the truth is, is that Sunday, it's spelled Sunday, because I'm out of quick. S U N D A Y. What's the first three letters? Sun. Mm-hmm. Because it comes it's from a, a pagan worship people. Yeah. The sun people who worship the sun. The Catholic Church accommodated because there were so many of them. And they couldn't come back them with a Sabbath. Sabbath. The sabbatical. The sabbat is on a what day? Saturday. Correct. So y'all, so y'all start? Y'all got it? So the reason why he puts it on the first day is on the last day. God said, take the Sabbath and keep it home. It was God who said that. that wasn't, I didn't say that. I didn't write a book. Okay? God said, why is it the seventh day? What, what happened on the seventh day? He rested. He what? Rested. Correct. So the reality there is that he rested. The whole point is, everybody say rest. Rest. The whole thing, the whole reason why God went to the cross, I said that, yes, God went to the cross. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Who's on the cross? God's on the cross. Mm-hmm. God is on the cross, reconciling the world to himself. Jesus. God did that. We didn't do that. God did that. Mm-hmm. But you, it's all about the rest. The reality is it's the rest. God rested from how much of his work? All of it. All of them. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. If he rested from all his work, now check this out. If God rested from all his work, and that's in what time and period of time? About 6,000 plus years ago, right? Somewhere or whatever. Yes. Correct? <laughs> if that's the case, then all of a sudden John didn't get born until 1964. So John had been talking to you on March the 24th, not 2024. That didn't happen yet. But God rested from how much of his work? All of it. Well, am I a finished work? Yes. How am I a finished work if I didn't get bored yet? Oh, uh, okay, so that so you gotta taste and see. I, I want to come back to that over and over again. Because I want you to see were, the reality that God is not operating time. In fact, there is no time when it concerns God. That's right. And you know God's not held by time. It's right. the time, space, and matter. There's nothing, there's time. Good, there's no time in the eternal. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exist there. That's why when I taught you this, that when everybody dies of whatever period of time, the point of time that they die in, doesn't matter the eternal. Because mm-hmm. there's no time there. This doesn't exist. Right. I know this is deep theology, but so outside of all is nothing. He 
rested from all his work. Here's the beauty about that. If he rested from all his work, when did the crucifixion take place? Before the foundations of the world. Correct. Before Adam was ever made, Christ was crucified. That's right. All of that is done way before because God operates outside of time. So in essence, basically Adam was saved before he ever ate. Think about that. In reality, in the eternal spectrum of the thing, of the equation. But he rested. God rested. It's all been about that rest. God rested from all his work back then on the seventh day. He rested humanity's payment on a cross. He would rest the eternal blood from that, that, that perfect lamb on the eternal mercy seat. And he would now come back and rest in us. It's all been about the rest. The whole reason why he went to the cross was about the rest. Now again, this is Palm Sunday, and I know that this is something that everybody talks about. So today is Palm Sunday. So we're going to ask and answer some questions today. What is this that we are celebrating? When was the first celebration? Where was the first celebration? How is it celebrated? Who is supposed to be celebrating this? These are questions that Palm Sunday. If you if you if you was in from if you were from Suriname, which is in South America, sure. Called Suriname, you would speak a language called Surinamese. Surinamese language, to hear it, sounds almost Portugal, but it's not. But to hear a Suriname person speak, and you would bring them here on Palm Sunday, they would have these questions why are we wearing green with John said so? Or why, why are we doing this on what is Palm Sunday? There'll be questions to be asked because it, this is something that's outside of their realm of norm. Here is normal. Okay? So we're going to talk about this because I want to talk about, first of all, is when is it this year? Can I tell you that today is not really Palm Sunday? Can I tell you that next week will not really be true Easter? Yeah. What happened? We're in March. Early I told you about the Gregorian calendar, which is a thing that hangs on your walls at the house. Right? And the Gregorian people. By the way, their name, the Gregorian, have you ever heard something called the Gregorian chant? This is the Gregorian chant. This is the first ounce of music that has been, the Gregorian people were the first people who numbered music on number lines. They were the first people that numbered music. Their name, Gregor, means to numerate. Gregorians are the people who have got numbers. And the Gregorian calendar is all dealt with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so on and so on. Different from that of the Jewish culture, the Jewish timeline does not operate on the Gregorian scale. The Jewish calendar operates on the time and season scale. To know about the season of something. Everybody know what the equinox is? Mm -hmm. What is the equinox? Right, so you have two opposites and two equinoxes, don't you? Equal, equal not. It's the e something that equates one on the other. One on the darkest or the, the, the shortest time day, which is when? When does that happen? When is, the, when is that, that shortest time equinox happening? Uh, uh, you're close. Winter. Winter. When is, the, when is the longest equinox? Summer. In the summer. The longest period of time of the day, the shortest period of time of the day. Alright? So this is that is the equinox. When you understand the time frame of what the it's the same same time, same amount of time exists, but on the Jewish calendar it operates in seasons. Okay? So now check this out. When is it going to be this year? It's going to be Friday, April the nineteenth, it's Palm Sunday. April 19th, we're about three weeks off. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is that right? Three weeks? Am I close? 
Do we win? Okay. Now let me show you why it's like this. Uh, again, you, I'm going to teach you real good today, I promise. Uh, you're going to walk away from here. You're going to walk away from here a little bit smarter today. Because when somebody wants you to ask me up call on Sunday, you're going to have some information. You may not retain it all. But it's on a video on Facebook, so you go back and watch it all. So you can if you want to go back and catch it again, you can. How about that? So, Shabbat Haggadol. Everybody say Shabbat Haggadol. Shabbat Haggadol. Ah, you just said Palm Sunday. Okay? It began, the Hebrew year, right now, it's 5784. Hebrew year. Yep. Okay? So almost 6,000 years. From when? 6,000 years from when? And Christ crucified. 6,000 years from when? Thank you. From the very creation of the world? Ah. Oh. So when you look at the Jewish calendar, you kind of go back and say about when time got created. It makes you make really think for a minute, right? So the Sunday on Friday the 19th, April 24th, or April 2024, ends on nightfall Saturday, which is which is before the, is the end of the seventh day, the beginning of the first day. It's, it, it corresponds with Parashat Mitzvah. I'm talking Jewish terms. These are things you may not understand. Parashat So you got Shabbat Hagadol, which literally means Great Shabbat. Shabbat is a chapter. Correct. It's, 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 it's a celebration. Okay. It's this this today. Even though I know on a Gregorian calendar day is Palm Sunday, but if we're really in, in, in April, when it really was to take place, this happens immediately before the Passover. Now they're saying we're going to go about Passover. Passover really is this year, 2024, on the Gregorian calendar. It begins on, on April 22nd. 2024 ends on April 30th. That's the, the Passion Week. Okay? So it's important to know these are the real time frames this year. What happens with Passover, Shabbat, on Sunday? Okay? Now, let me get a little bit more understanding. The first covenant application is choosing of the Lamb. Understand what Palm Sunday was about. Palm Sunday is about choosing the right sacrifice, making your choice plain, clean, clear cut, without confusion. Palm Sunday is the week before the actual crucifixion or the actual Passover that would take place. Now, I'm going to, let me go back to some time. If you understand that, you've got to understand what we're talking about when we talk about Passover. Passover is a one time a year. There are three feasts in the Jewish calendar. Everybody say three. Three. God operates through threes. Okay? He's not three, he's one. But he operates through threes. Okay? He isn't signified by three, he just operates in it. He he, if, if I was, if I take an egg, how many parts of the, of the egg are there? Three. Okay, what are they? The shell, the membrane, and the yolk. Okay, so shell, white, yolk, right? Shell, white, yolk. Some people like that, right? Am I right? Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, now, here's the thing. But if I take one part away from that, do I have an egg? No. If I have something left. I have pieces of it, or a part of it, but I don't have a whole egg. If I, if I took one, if I took the shell away, do I get a head of the two? Unbroken. With nothing inside of it. Am I giving you an egg? No. No, I'm not. Okay, no. Remember, a half, a half truth is still a whole lot. Yeah. Okay? So, we got to look to this from a new covenant standpoint. The nation of Israel... And what they were doing during the Passover time is the choosing of the Messiah, who's going to be that suffering servant, okay? Who's going to sacrifice on our behalf. The ultimate fulfillment is when Jesus rises into Jerusalem, hence today what we're celebrating it for. Christ, the Lamb, is coming before the people for the people to decide and choose, is this the Lamb to be sacrificed? That's what it's there for. The whole reason why I've been showing the palm branches. I know there's so many different people that's come up with so many different things in regards to the palm tree and all this kind of stuff. Get that out of your crazy head. 
Because the problem is, is that the palm tree, the, you pull the leaf off the tree and it, it's not living anymore. It's That's deceased. Right. That's right. It may look a good game, but it's still not, it's not a real palm leaf. A real palm leaf is connected to the palm tree. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If, if, you, if, if, if anyone is not worthy of me, he's plucked from me because he is the same as what? Dead. Deceived. No good. you got to know that you can't take a part of something and proclaim it to be this. you got to have the whole thing or not. Either you're going to believe a whole truth or a whole lie. Or a part truth, which still is a whole lie. All right? He rides into, on that donkey, on that coat of a donkey that has never been ridden before. There's more no significance of that. That this represents the reality of what the Messiah or the Lamb of God is. And the Lamb that is to be chosen by the people. And the people are going to proclaim things. The people are going to say things. This is in Levitical. I mean, this is part of the Levite tradition. I'm teaching you something that, that is a, by the Levitical Passover rule, okay? But it is part of the preparation. Now, prophetically, when Jesus rides that donkey, he is fulfilling scripture that the prophets spoke of. One is Zechariah, yeah. and the other was one being in Psalms. Zechariah says this, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Notice he didn't say Israel. Notice he said Zion. There's a reason why it doesn't say Israel. Had it had said Israel, it means that God was only going to save the people of Israel with the Messiah and not mankind, which is all of us in Zion. That's, that's, that's good stuff there. Shout and triumph with the people of Jerusalem. Why did he say Jerusalem? Because that's the city he will be slain in. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious. Yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. Why is it that the Jews were so ticked off that he didn't come riding in on some stallion to remove the Roman oppression. When Zechariah had told them many hundreds of years ago prior to this, is exactly what he would be doing. Some of them call it so did. He says, I will remove the battle chariots from Israel and the war horses from Jerusalem, and I will destroy all the weapons used in battle, and your king will bring peace to the nations. His realm will stretch from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. He also said in Psalm 118, Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. This is prophecy that God was going to prophesy through these men to us today. Now let's talk about the meaning of this Hebrew celebration. Okay? On these words, we're talking about the Shabbat Haggadah. We we talk about this. The Jewish crowd on that day is recognizing uh, the prophecy that the Messiah would ride on this donkey call. This is what we just got through reading. And they were going to wave and spread out palm branches. It's a symbol of Israel. It's a symbol of that they were going to be used to do such a thing. It's an anticipation that Christ is going to bring this, they think, a military revol revolt. But the truth is that God is doing something spiritual, not physical. Now, they would shout, now, Hashiyah. Everybody say Hashiyah. Hashiyah. We would say in the angelical world, Hosanna. But it's really Hashiyah. And it literally means save now. When you hear the word Hosanna, it means save now. When do you want salvation? Praise God. When do you want? Now. now. You don't want it tomorrow. And you didn't you might have wanted it last week, but you want it definitely now. Okay? So that's what the word comes out of with me. It, it okay. blessed is he who comes. This is talking about the Messiah. In the name of the Lord. Let me, I, let, let me stop here. I'm going to upset something else, real deep theology here for a minute. And I hope I do. I, I, I really enjoy upsetting bad theology. Just, just makes me happy to upset bad theology. When somebody thinks something that they don't think they, they've been taught it for years and find out that they ain't true. The, the truth is the freedom. Christ's truth sets you free. 
Okay? Notice it says he comes in the heart of the Lord. Comes in the heart of the Lord. The name of the Lord. This one is coming in the name of. I'm, Trinity can come up here and talk to you in the name of her father, John. You would accept it quicker had it come from Eli. Eli, that's not like a good, that's not like a good Christian name, Eli. Right? That's not like Trinity. Well, that kind of sounds, that kind of sounds religious in a way, but how do you, which is better? The truth is, is that you would accept her quicker than you would him because she belongs to me. Now, he might be a godson or he might be, you know, some body I adopt or whatever. You want to be adopted? I, I got room at the house. I can fit you on the couch. Where? Couch. I said couch. <laughs> so, so the point I'm making here is, is that the name of something, the name of something, if I were to say I am a representative of Citizens Tri-County Bank, would you believe me? Could you believe me? You could, maybe. But what would prove that I am a representative of Tri-County Bank? What would, what, would it, what would give me the authority as a member of an employee of Citizens Tri-County Bank? Huh? A badge, maybe? Exactly. So, something that would give you recognition. What about if all of a sudden all the people were there, I was the vice president of the bank, and walked to the door and everybody called me, sir, and Mr. Roberts, and all of a sudden I all of a sudden saw this, this respect start going on just because I walked in the room. But you know that people work in such a strike every day. If I walked in that room, if I was the vice president of it, all of a sudden they treated me like some kind of, you know, superstar. Right. You would recognize that there's some authority there. With the proof is, is in the pudding. The proof is, is that he comes in the name of the Lord. He himself is in the name of the Lord. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself. Who is Christ? God. God is Christ. And God is in a human jumpsuit. That's God in there. And God Himself is coming to redeem mankind because mankind can't do it. Amen. It takes God to own what He can do. God who would curse the ground that we walked, that we came from. He didn't curse man. And He cursed Adam, there would have been no hope for him. But He did not do that. He cursed the ground from which we came from, the dirt, the thing that we identify with, flesh. You identify with flesh. You enjoy flesh. You love flesh. You like flesh. Flesh makes you feel good. You just love flesh. Everybody loves flesh. I don't care who you is. You like to eat? Anybody here like to eat? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say it. I ain't gonna say it. I ain't gonna. You like to eat? Well, what's that? What's it? What is that? When you eat, what is that? What is that tending to? What is it taking care of? Your flesh. You gotta understand the, the, the flesh part of you. That comes from the dirt. When God cursed the ground, He didn't curse Adam. Had He cursed Adam, there would have been no hope. But He did not. He only cursed the ground. So when He comes to the women, He only cursed the childbearing. He didn't curse the woman. But, but when He got to the Lucifer, Satan, He cursed him. Period. So upon your bed and show, you eat what? Dust. Dust. What do we make from? What do we make from? Dust. Dust. So what does the devil get to eat? Our flesh. Flesh. You, you, you don't want him playing in your backyard. Stop feeding that. cat can't come back here all the time. Okay? So I'm stop pulling around to that flesh part. Then you, you, I, some of us feed our flesh more than we feed our spirit. That's true. Now, he says, he who comes in the name of him. Now what they miss and what the majority of Christians miss today, they don't realize that this is a particular day, it was an important day, because it is supposed to be a day that we choose the Lamb to be slain. You're making a choice. 
If Palm Sunday was anything, Palm Sunday would be the reality of you making a decision that that is your God, that is that your lamb, that is your king, that's who he, you're going to make a choice. If Palm Sunday would serve any purpose, it would be that you'd be making a decision, a choice, to serve him. Now, let me get to the next part of here. What is it, and what is its history? Shema HaGadot. Literally means great Sabbath. Okay? Here's where it comes from. Then the Lord said to Moses, Lift your hand toward heaven, and the land of Egypt will be covered with a darkness so thick you can feel it. So Moses lifted his hand to the sky, and a deep darkness covered the entire land of Egypt. For how many days? Three days. Boy, that's funny. Three days. Here's just three days stuff. Darkness. Hey, this is going to be good. During all that time, the people could not see each other and no one moved. But there was light, as usual, where the people of Israel lived. Mm -hmm. It didn't affect them. They lived outside it. Finally, Pharaoh called for Moses. Go and worship the Lord, he said. But leave your flocks and your herds here. You may even take your little ones with you. In other words, you can take your kids, but you ain't taking your goats and your cows and all. You leave all the chickens that they here at the house. You can't go nowhere. You can take your kids with you. But you don't want them rats here. You can take them along with you. That's what, that's what he, is that too hard? That's what he says. That's exactly what he said. No, no, Moses said, you must provide it. Hey, who's going to do the provision? You. Mm. Hmm. You must provide us with animals for sacrifices and burnt offerings to the Lord our God. But you get to provide our sacrifice to our God. He's not your God, but he's our God. And you get to help us provide for him. Mm -hmm. These are the, this is the, the scripture, by the way, that gets fulfilled later, that the world is laying up the treasure for us to be able to take. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's coming from Pharaoh. It's coming from Egypt. I ain't got, I ain't got time going to that. <laughs> But, they, but, but Moses said, no, you must provide us the animals for sacrifices and burn offerings to the Lord our God. All our livestock must go with us, too. So not just our livestock, but all yours is going with it. All of it's going. Amen. We're taking every animal with us. And he said, not a hoof can be left behind. Nothing. Not one Egyptian is going to get one animal. This is the, this is the deal that he's making with Moses. We must choose our sacrifices for the Lord our God from among these animals, and we won't know how we are to worship the Lord until we get there. But the Lord heart but the Lord heart the Pharaoh's heart once more. By the way, who's doing all the hard then? The Lord's doing that. Mm -hmm. The Lord's heart and Pharaoh's heart once more, and he would not let them go. Get out of here, Pharaoh shouted to Moses. I'm warning you. Never come back to see me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Very well, Moses replied. I will never see your face again. And that became true. We'll, we'll talk about it maybe here in a minute. So what does Shabbat Haggadah mean in Hebrew? It means great Shabbat. It comes before the Passover. A customary greeting would be Shabbat Haggadah Barak. That's what you would say if you were to greet somebody like Happy Palm Sunday. Or something like that. That's how you would say it in the Jewish tongue. So here's the reading that would go place for a Jewish person upon this day when they were actually celebrated in April. It's a special Sabbath from Shabbat HaGadol, which is the great Sabbath. Uh, it's the prophetic proportion, portion that comes from Malachi chapter 3. Here's the thing. Malachi chapter 3 has been abused for religious reasons for centuries. Centuries this has been done. Anybody here pay a tithe? Has anybody ever paid a tithe? Has anybody ever just, you know, been saying, well, if you don't pay a tithe, you're going to be you're in trouble. Yeah. If you, 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 you're going to be cursed. Anybody, anybody been told if you don't pay a tithe, you're going to be cursed? Yeah. Well, that's kind of crazy because the Bible says he became a curse for us. Yeah. So the curses are gone. Yeah. The curses that were done back in Adam's time are gone. The curses don't mean nothing anymore. He became a curse. In fact, so much so, the Bible says, he became sin. He knew no sin. Mm -hmm. He becomes it. I don't know if you heard it. He becomes sin. Who knew no sin. Mm -hmm. That we might become, the scripture says, the righteousness of God in Christ. 
Amen. I don't have time to go into that, but I want to read you what Malachi says. Malachi chapter 3, I'm going to read all of verses 4 through 24, but I want you to hear it because this has been abused. This passage of scripture has been abused. You don't see me no offer played up here. Do you see it? Where's that? Do you see me having a deacon? Where's a deacon at? Go and make sure you give up some money. You've got to give up some money around. Or you'll be slapped with a curse. You don't see that come out of You don't see that come out of here. That will never come from here. Okay? But this is what this passage is really about. Malachi chapter 3, and it's been talking about paying the tithes. It's got nothing to do with your money. It's got everything to do with what's called offering. It's got everything to do with what's called a sacrifice. Everybody say sacrifice. Sacrifice. That's what it's about. It's about you doing what you're supposed to be doing from the beginning anyway. But you chose not to. The book of Malachi, if you will, the writing of Malachi, the prophet of Malachi writes his, his, his prophecy, which is the last voice that we will hear, prophetically speaking, until Christ would come, or excuse me, until John the Baptist would show up. That would be the last prophetic voice that would be heard, uttered from the Old Testament. But his voice comes 400 years prior to the coming of Christ and the coming of John the Baptist. And the reason why that is is because God is the voice in preparing us for a time where we could come and really choose when a real Palm Sunday would actually come about that we would get to choose or they did back when Christ was on that donkey. Okay? Listen to what Malachi chapter 3 says. Listen very intently. Then once more the Lord will accept the offerings brought to him by the people of Judah and Jerusalem as he did in the past. What's, he, what, what's the subject matter? Offerings. The subject matter is the offerings, isn't it? At that time I will put you on trial. I am eager to witness against all sorcerers and adulterers and liars. I will speak against those who cheat employees of their wages, who oppress widows and orphans, or who deprive the foreigners living among you of justice. For these people do not fear me, says the Lord of heaven's armies. I am the Lord, and I do not change. It's left. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have sworn my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you ask, how can we return that we have never gone away? You still go to church on Sunday. You still are there. You still go to church on the middle of the week. You still have Sunday school. You still have all these practices you're doing. This is what the people were saying. We, how, have you, how have we done this when we ain't really gone away? We're still practicing what we've been told to be practicing. Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. This is what God said. But you ask, what did you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and the offerings to me. Now, I right hear where people will say, well, you've got to give your tithes and offerings. If you don't, you're going, to be, you're, going to, you're going to be cursed. That's not what he's talking about. Tell the truth about it. He's not talking about money. In fact, money would, it was money existed. I don't know if know what it existed as at this time in Malachi. What did money exist as? Stock. That's one. Livestock. That's, yeah, that's one. Fields. Fields, what else? Earth. Hmm? Earth. I didn't hear you. Earth. Okay, okay. Uh, your family, your children, yep. your clothing that you make, yep. the things that you would barter with before, you would trade somebody something for something. All of this. These are things. And there's not one dollar bill. The United States has not been created yet. Okay? So that's not what he's talking about. He says, you've been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. What in his temple? Why is that the case? Why does, that, why does there have to be food in the temple? Anybody? Who works the temple? The priests. Oh, the priests. Are the priests out there working the fields like the other tribes no. are doing? No. Priest That's money. the reason why the tithe of money, well, we say money, but the truth is the tithe of what they were getting out there, which is lambs, your livestock, your, 
your, the thing that you would make from the, create from the earth, your harvest. This is the stuff because they had to feed their family. This is, this is the economics of Israel. Okay? And he says, uh, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough for your chicken. Try it. Put them in the tent. Your crops will be abundant. For I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of the heaven's armies. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord's armies. You have said terrible things about me. Anybody said anything terrible about God? Have you ever heard it? You've heard anybody say something bad? Well, if God really did love us, like He said, He wouldn't have yeah. any disease in this world. Oh, How about that one? Or God wouldn't let all that happen to me if, get, if God was real. Anybody heard that one? Have yeah. you said it? Anybody said that? I mean, honestly, anybody said, well, if God was real, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be having these problems. Anybody said that? Sure you have. You know you have. Because you look to, you, you want, what do you want? What do you want? Hosanna. That's what right you want. Right now. You want yeah. right now. So now you, I want salvation now. That's what you want. You have said, what's the use of serving God? <laughs> I've said it. Yeah, that's exactly right. What have we gained by obeying his commands and by trying to show the Lord of heaven's armies that we are sorry for our sins? Anybody said that? Mm. From now on, we will call the arrogant blessed. Mm. For those who do evil get rich, and those who dare God to punish them suffer no harm. Then the Lord who feared, then those who feared the Lord spoke with each other, and the Lord listened to what they said. So this one was talking about when I want God all this stuff. So God started listening. In his presence, a scroll of the remnants was written to record the names of those who feared him, and always thought about the honor of his name. That is a that is a prophetic word to your salvation and your name being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That is a prophetic word of what that refers to. They will be my people, said the Lord of Heaven's armies. On the day when I act in judgment, they will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Not a, not a one of his bad. Obedient child. And it says, listen to what he said. Then you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked. Between those who serve God and those who do not. This is Malachi was about the reality of offering. What were you supposed to be offering to God? Which is yourself. The Bible in Romans says we offer ourselves a what? A living sacrifice. Ourselves. A living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God. That's what it says. There are many places that recite special hymns in, in the Jewish world when it comes to today, or Palm Sunday as we call it. And there's no really, and during those morning, morning services, there's certain hymns that go on. There's certain, certain scriptures that's read all the time. The main thing of these hymns is all regarding Passover. It puts you in a mindset to know what's ahead of you. To know that you, today is the day that you choose your sacrifice unto the Lord. It helps, it, it helps us to understand what it is to come to knowing who He is. Alright? Well, what is it? Shabbat Haggadah. It's the Shabbat prior to the uh, celebration. Shabbat celebrating prior to Passover. In modern Hebrew, let me help you understand what this word Haggadah. Everybody say Haggadah. Haggadah. Say Haggadah in the Jewish language or in the Hebrew tongue. It really means great. In fact, in modern Hebrew, the doll is slang. It's, 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 it's just a slang word that interjects something to mean like super. Something really, really cool. Something that's that even funny or hilarious or awesome. That's what the word the doll means, okay? So, example, if somebody heard a funny joke, they may interject, the doll. You may, if you ever listen to he, like watch the Hebrew channel or something, you'll see like jokes or Hebrew people passing along jokes and they'll say, good dog, good dog, good dog, good dog. Yeah, this, is, this is where this is coming from. So now you know. Now, what is its history? The Shabbat Haggadah is the time of four Passover. It's the time of the Midrash 
Everybody know what Midrash is? What happened on the great miracle day of Midrash? It's what we read before in Exodus. The Egyptians firstborn saw the Israelites taking the land that Shabbat and asked them why. In other words, why are you taking our land from us? Remember, when they left Egypt, they took all that livestock with them. The reason why they were chasing after this was to get some of their livestock back. They were taking all the wealth out of Egypt. Gold, silver, frankincense, myrrh. All this stuff is coming from the land of Egypt. It's being that God ripped away from the Egyptian world what they thought was wealthy, honorable. And now the people of Israel, where do you think the, the Ark of the Covenant of the gold was made from? Where do you think the silver sockets came from? Where do you think all this stuff, all this, where do you think all this brass came from? It came from Egypt. The, the, the mirror down at the bottom of the looking glass of the, 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 the brazen labor it was made from the looking glass of the women of Israel that they got from the women from Egypt. The, the whole understanding of where all this wealth is coming from it came out of Egypt. They replied that they were preparing a sacrifice to God who was going to kill the firstborn Egypt. The firstborn of all of Egypt. That is where Passover is coming from. When the death angel would come on the scene and had you not taken a lamb, a perfect lamb, and slain it, and you would have taken that animal after you had slew it and took its blood from it, and you would have walked it upon the door of it. One, two, three, by the way. Again, this is how God operates. One, two, three. You would have been two sides of your top. The real reality that this is not on the bottom is the connection you have to the earth. The the whole lamb then would be taken and been cooked. And you would eat this lamb. And if it was too much for you, you would buy your neighbor. So everybody said so there's no part of the lamb that was wasted. No part of the lamb was just thrown away. You didn't have leftovers. Yeah. Everybody got to eat. Everybody got to consume all of them. Can I tell you that when we come to Christ, who is our perfect land, that he is enough to fill everybody. Woo, tell that. Yes. There's enough of God to fill everybody. Yes. And nothing's left over. That's right. And we're supposed to take all of them. We ain't supposed to just take bits and pieces. You ain't supposed to take this part of that Bible that you like and throw away the rest. Amen. You gotta take it all. You don't take nothing. God is the Word. The Word right, in the flesh. You gotta understand what that Word is. That's God. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. God. And the Word was and the word God. Was God? What's God? A Word. word. And the Word became word. flesh. And the Word became flesh. He dwelt among us. Tabernacle. That's right. And that Word when He became flesh. You, you gotta understand. Well, well, see, that's Jesus. That's God number two. No, there ain't such thing as God number two. There's only one God. That's God in Christ reconciling the world to himself in a body, human, human body called Jesus. That's like um, Levi's Jesus. Um, what's the name? What do you know? One of them brands. And what do you mean? One of them, one of them fancy brands that they call. What's that? Uh, hot, hot. What's that? What's that? Age one? Hill finger. Hill finger, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's your hill finger, y'all. That's God. That's Jesus. Okay, right. you got to understand God's brand ain't hill finger. It ain't Nike. Okay? Yeah. It's Jesus. Yeah. you got to understand what that is. That's God wearing a flesh suit. Was it no matter how you like it? Yeah. God wearing a sin suit. Messiah. How about this? He, he, he is Elohim. Right? Elohim. Yes, to understand what he is. He is all that. And a bag of chips. And then some. Okay? And then some. Yeah. But you gotta understand that ain't another part of him gonna ever be wasted. Mm -hmm. He is just enough. Yeah, he is all in all. He's all of everything. That's right. And he's the fullness of he's the fullness of everything. Yet God chooses all of that, chooses to live inside of us. That's right. You think about that one for a minute. Woo! How big is God? And all that's inside you. Mm -hmm. you. You need to understand who we're talking about here. But this was the firstborns that he was going to slay, which is a representation of the firstborn. The first shall become last, and the last shall become first. first. When you recognize what he's referring there in the Passover, is that Jesus was slain before the foundations of the world. And on top of that, that happened before time ever got created. That God did all that. This is vast. This is theology. What do we mean? And the firstborn, the 
death angel that comes, the representation there is a representation of the Passover, which they would later do over and over, year after year, and what we do, what we call Easter. The Passover, the celebration of the Passover. There's three weeks. There's Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle. You've got to understand what those three feasts mean. If you're going to be in Christ, you don't know what the three feasts are. The Passover, the Lamb, Him, God, Him becoming the Amen. sacrifice in your stead. He's not, he's not representing you. He is you Amen. on the cross. He is the death that you're paying for you in your stead. The reality of who you will, the whole comprehension of God being in Christ is representing mankind to a God of the creator of the universe who created mankind to begin with. This is God. Amen. This is who did. This is what he did. And why how he did it? He it did it through a, a, a tool. He did it through a tool called a cross. The tool is what he used to make it happen. Amen. That cross ain't nothing. I got this in my pocket. All this is is a representation because of what he did, how he did, and I put it in my pocket because it's close to my heart, so it helps me understand what he did in here. Amen. That's why I do this. is why I wear this. This isn't for anybody. I, I haven't tried to get no kudos at nobody. Amen. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to wear my cross. The Bible says to take up your cross. Amen. I, I got to I'm about to start preaching. I'm going to quit. Praise the Lord. The, the, whole, right the, right the whole point of what the Passover serves for us is the Passover that he, he do this instead of you doing it. You, he represents, he is your representation to God. Amen. That's what he, hey, you're not God. Amen. No, we're not. So you can't do it and suffice the problem. Amen. You can't make it right. That's right. Ain't nothing you can do to make it right. They ain't nothing. Unless you wouldn't kill yourself. And still would be torn for sacrifice. Yeah, that, the, only, the only the truth of what you are, mm -hmm. who you are. Now, you've got to understand this midrash, what that midrash does. The midrash is that reality when yes. the Egyptians saw the, all their livestock leave. Because from that and from what they own, the Israelites, the, what they had in total is going to come the sacrifice that's going to be perfect for God. Because it can't be anything but. You can't just have a black sheep and say that's going to, that's going to work. Or you can't take a three-legged lamb and say, well, that's going to work. You can't do you can't take a lamb only got one eye. Amen. It's got to have it's got to be it's got to be a, it's got to be a perfect lamb. This is why God is the perfect Christ is the perfect lamb. Christ. Amen. You, you need to understand that Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel. I know we've heard it every Christmas. We hear it preached to us. That means God, God with us. But the truth of the matter, the word Emmanuel does not mean God with us. The word Emmanuel means God as us. He represented. Is what he. He's not. He is with us. He's with us afterwards. But he's as us before. Amen. Amen. Some good going. stuff. I got to keep going. So how does this apply to us today? Let me, let me move on. Every year, on the 10th day of the first month of the Jewish calendar, let me say it again, pay attention, every year on the, how many days? 10th day of the first month of the Jewish year. 10, watch this, watch. I, I now you don't understand what a tithe is. Ten. On the tenth day, a tenth is a tithe, right? Okay. okay. A tenth. On the tenth day, what's the number ten represent in the Bible? Law. Yeah. What is legal? What is right? What is the law? How many commandments? Ten. Oh, fifteen. He just dropped five. <laughs> right? No, 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 no. No, there's ten commandments. Now how about this? How many plagues hit Egypt? Ten. ten. Each one of those plagues is a plague against one of their ten gods. Mm -hmm. So each plague represented each god that they worshipped. Mm -hmm. It was a combatancy against each. And the last one was darkness before the death angel came. And one of the, the 
gods that they, they worshipped was Ra, the sun. Uh, he blotted out their greatest god. Couldn't keep it burning. Couldn't either. keep it burning. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole point of what the, each one of those, those ten commandments is a representation of the ten plagues that represents the ten gods. Ten is the number of law or legality. And check this out. Of what month? The first month. The first month. So the firstborn is what's going to be affected by that last plague. And the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. And this is the time, the payment, the payment that is due God, the time of the firstborn. This is the ultimate sacrifice of God who is in Christ paying the tithe for all of mankind. All right. That's him inside us, representing. Now, that's the Jewish guy. It's called Abib. In the scripture, they changed it. They changed it. The Babylonians did to Nisan. Nisan. Okay, Nisan. Okay, yeah, Nisan. Okay. It ain't one you drive around in Nisan. <laughs> okay. This, this, is, this is the time that the Babylonians, this is the Babylonian name. You know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is not their real names? Go back and I'm going to tell you about it. Go look it up. It's Daniel's not his, that's not his name. Go look it up. Go look, I, I, you, I, anyway. The people were to select a yearling lamb without blemish, which would be sacrificed at twilight before Passover later that week, which would fall on Thursday night, the week of Jesus was Christian. Messiah. Amen. 
you're gonna you gotta decide if, if he is your Messiah. He is he is he is the creator in a human jumpsuit. No. I want to end today with the scripture for us today. Because I want you to hear the fulfillment of scripture. And I'm gonna show you where it's all at. I'm gonna read it to you real quickly. And I'm gonna show you something that's very cool and how to connect this with your own personal life. Ready? As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them ahead, going to the village over there. He said, as soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there and with its coat beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say the Lord needs them and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. And the two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the coat to him and threw their garments over the coat and sat on it. Most of the crowd spit their garments on, spread their garments me, on the road ahead of him. And others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And Jesus was in the center of the procession. And the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked. And the crowds replied, It's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Mark 11. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came from the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them ahead and going to the village over there. He told them, as soon as you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that has no one ever rode. Untie it, bring it here. If anyone asks you are, what you're doing, just say the Lord needs it and will return it soon. The two disciples left and found the coat standing in the street, tied outside the front door as they were untying it. Some bystander demanded, what are you doing? Untying that coat. Your horse feet. They said what Jesus had told them to say, and they were permitted to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it, and he sat on it. Many in the town spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others spread leafy branches, and they cut, had cut in the fields. And Jesus was at the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God, blessings on the one who comes from the name of the Lord, blessings on the, on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, praise God in the highest. Luke 19. After telling the story, Jesus was on, went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead, going to that village over there. He told them, As you enter it, you will see a young donkey pond there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, Why are you untying that coat? Just say, The Lord needs it. And so they went and found the coat, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, Why are you untying that coat? Are you still on a horse? As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of the followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessing on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. And he replied, If they keep quiet, the stones along the road burst into cheers. John. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. And they shouted, Praise God, blessings on the one who comes from the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. See, they already chose him all out. They weren't to decide who's going to be his inside. They weren't to decide who's going to be the land. But Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid of people in Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's coat. And his disciples didn't understand at that time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Let me tell you something. Wow. Farm Sunday is a representation of our choosing. You get to choose. 
You get to choose whether you want to live for God or you don't want to live for God. You get to choose whether you want Him to be your Messiah or if you want your uh, PlayStation to be your Messiah. You get to choose whether or not you want Him to be your King or you want somebody that you live with to be your King. You get to decide whether or not you want to have Him be your God or you let marijuana go Whatever it is they do now. What do they do now? I don't know what to do. What do they do? What do they do? What's that? Meth. Methyl. Fentanyl. Fentanyl. I don't know. Whatever to kill you. But they would choose that to be their God. You can have anything to be your God. Anything. A person, a place, a thing. Doesn't matter. An action. Maybe, maybe you just enjoy getting hot. I don't know. Maybe you enjoy playing your video games. And that's all you want to do. I don't know. Maybe that has become your God. Anything can become an idol to you. Doesn't matter. A person can become an idol to you. Amen. Now I ain't talking about husband and wife. They, they, that's not, that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody that you fall behind. What are they? What's that show? American Idol. Oh, American Idol. There you go. There's one. Exactly. Uh, great point. Exactly. Yeah, great point. Great point. Right. Because, you know, all of a sudden, what's that guy on the end? Everybody talks about him? Simon. Simon. Yeah, Simon. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. You know, that, that, that cat. You know, if you, and if he don't like it. Uh, You're off. Oh, uh, you know, right. It's hard, right? It's hard. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's what we, we can idolize somebody. We can idolize a thing. Okay? And again, I'm not talking about husband and wife. That's a given. That, there's rules for that game. I ain't got time going to go into that. I'm not going to that. It's a whole other Sunday. Huh? It's a whole other Sunday. It's a whole other Sunday. I do, want, I do want to express to you today, being Palm Sunday, I wanted you to know what Palm Sunday meant. It meant the choosing of a Messiah. It meant that the, you would look among all the things that you have in your front of you, all the things that's in your life, all the things that you deem important, and decide, is any of that worth more than him? It's that simple. If you can, if, if, if for a second that you question, or for a second you would even consider something else, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because there is a problem there. There's a problem in your devotion. There's a problem in your connection. There's a problem in your relationship. There's a problem in your fellowship. There's a problem there. Because if you can't instantly decide, and instantly quickly retain, utter out of your mouth that He is Lord, that Jesus Christ is Lord, if you can't say that, then He's not. It's just that simple. All right? Okay, so everybody, any questions? Yeah? No? no? Okay. Go ahead. You gonna turn it on? Is that what you want? Oh, you want to go ahead and on? Head on? Weirdo. Uh,